Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph a quadratic using the equation for a vertex as well as axis symmetry. Now, I have two functions and I have two equations. And they're basically going to be the exact same thing. It's just a little bit different. But I'm not really sure what type of study you're doing as far as quadratic functions or quadratic equations. So the way my explanation is going to work, um, I'm going to change it kind of for both of those. However, the standard, form, or the standard form kind of applies. When you have a quadratic in standard form, you can either complete the square, rewrite it in vertex form, and graph using our transformations, or um, we can identify the axis of symmetry as well as the vertex. So the main important thing here is identifying the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is so important because that's going to be the line that the graph is symmetrical about. So it also helps us because we can only gra we can graph one side of the quadratic over parabola and then flip it to the to graph the other side. So the axis of symmetry is x equals opposite of b divided by two times a. Remember, that's for all quadratics in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So therefore, in this case, I basically have negative 6 divided by 2 times 1 equals negative 6 divided by 2, which equals negative 3. Therefore, my axis of symmetry is a line x equals negative 3. So when graphing this, that's the first thing we're going to want to do. And that's going to basically give me an understanding of you know, where this axis of symmetry, where this graph is symmetrical about. So I graph a nice little dashed line, because x equals 3 creates a vertical line. So therefore, I know that this line not only cuts my parabola in half, but also that is going to be the, where my vertex, the main important point on a parabola, that's where my vertex is going to lie. So I'm using that understanding. If I know that the, x, that the axis symmetry has an x value of negative 3, well, guess what? The vertex, since it lies on the axis symmetry, the x value of the vertex, because the vertex is a point where the axis symmetry is lying, is going to be opposite of b divided by 2 times a. And then f of opposite of b divided by 2 times a. And this is where I was talking about the difference between equations and functions. When we talk about functions, we talk about evaluating, right? If I had you know, f of x equals 3x plus 1, and I say f of negative 1, then you plug in negative 1 in for x. All right. So in this case, you're taking your x value. Then you're going to plug that x value in back to your function to find the um, output value. Because basically, in this case, we have an x-axis and an f of x-axis, which is basically the same output as a y-axis if we were doing an equation. Basically, it represents the same thing, but the notation is a little bit differently. So anyways, um, I first need to figure out what my x value is, which is negative 3. Then to evaluate the vertex, the, my other point, I'm just going to do f of negative 3, because that's the x value of my vertex. So when plugging that into my equation, I have negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 9. Well, negative 3 squared is going to be positive 9. And 6 times negative 3 is negative 18 plus 9. Well, that's going to give me 0. Therefore, my vertex is at the coordinate point 0, comma, 0. I'm sorry. It's at the coordinate point negative 3, comma, 0. Now vertex, OK? Now, to also to graph it, it's kind of helpful to, one, identify if the graph is going to be opening up or down. You can say my A is, is positive, so I know my graph is going to be opening up. That's a good way to always check your work, make sure you're doing it correctly. Now, to find the remaining points, there's a couple ways you can do this. I see that this is my a is equal to 1. So if you remember when we were graphing vertex, uh, when we were graphing the parent graph, you know, when a is equal to 1, the tr basically the, tr the, the relationship between the rest of the point, or at least a couple points in the vertex, was over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. And that worked for a couple points, but that only works when a equals 1. Where you can see the rest of the problems here, I don't have that flexibility to be able to do that. So one way to just kind of double check, if you don't remember that, is always kind of pick two points right next to your axis symmetry. So I'll do negative 2 and negative 1. So I'll do f of negative 2. And I'll do f of negative 1. Now, again, remember that these are your input. Those represent your x values. And so I'm plugging in negative 1, negative 2. What is going to be my y coordinate? Well, I'll just plug it in. I'm going to say this out loud, though, and do it in my head. So negative 2 squared is going to be a positive 4. 6 times negative 2 is a negative 12. So therefore, negative 12 positive, po positive 4, negative 12 gives you a negative 8. Negative 8 plus 9 is going to be a positive 1. I would do the same thing. I'm just trying to save a little time. If I did negative 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus positive 1 is going to be negative 5. Negative 5 plus 9 is going to be a positive 4. 
All right, so let's go and plot those points. So at negative 2, I'm going up 1. At negative 1, I'm going up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's over there. And you can see that pat that follows what exactly I was talking about. From the vertex, when a equals 1, over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 4. So you could have used that path as well. So therefore, I just go ahead and graph. Graph it. And then you can see that now, since that's the axis symmetry, I can easily just reflect these points over 1, 2, 3, to graph the rest of my parabola. Done. OK, so now let's go look at this one, because this one has a negative a as well as being multiplied by 6. However, same thing applies. Find the axis symmetry, then find the vertex. So the axis symmetry, I'm just going to label as a capital A, is going to be x equals positive 12 divided by 2 times negative 6. Remember, it's opposite of b divided by 2 times a. So therefore, that's going to be 12 divided by negative 12, which equals negative 1. And remember, though, that's x equals negative 1. So I go ahead and plot my axis of symmetry. Now, to go ahead and find my vertex, again, I'm going to use a v. I'm going to take in the x coordinate and plug it into my function um, to find the output value, or to find the y, basically the y coordinate. So I have negative 6 times negative 1 squared minus 12 times negative 1 minus 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times negative 6 is going to be a negative 6. Negative 12 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 12 minus 1. So therefore, that becomes a positive 6 minus 1 is 5. Oops, did I not label my vertex? Yeah, I did. OK. So therefore, my vertex in this case has the x coordinate negative 1 and the y coordinate 5. So my vertex is negative 1 comma 5. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go back and determine the domain range and max and min here. But let me go and finish the rest of these first. So there's my vertex, negative 1, 5. So I'm going to go negative 1, now up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, again, if you're choosing two points, I always prefer to choose two points that are going to be towards my axis or towards my y-axis, because I like using easy numbers, right? So if I was going to choose two points to the right or to the left, I would choose two points to the right. And what I would do is I would choose f of 0 and f of 1. So again, I'll do these in my head. Um, 0 squared is 0. 0 times negative 6 is 0. Negative 12 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And then 1, that's going to give me a negative 6 minus 12. That's negative 18 minus negative 19. Wow, that grew quickly. Now, why did that grow grow quickly? Well, if you remember this one, over 1, up 1, a is equal to 1, right? Over 1, up 1, over 2. If it's negative, instead of going up, it's going to go over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4. But this now is being multiplied by 6. So instead of going over 1, down 1, you're going to go over 1, down 1, times 6. So it's going to be over 1, down 6. Instead of going over 2, down 4, you're going over 2, down um, 24, because you're multiplying how far you're going down by your a. Which would make sense, because here I'm going over 1. Instead of going down 1, I'm multiplying that by 6, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which was my coordinate point 0, comma, negative 1. And these are coordinate points as well. Now, I'm not going to get to 19. I don't have enough room here. However, I know that I can just reflect that point over, because using my axis symmetry. And the other thing I want you to kind of notice about this is remember the absolute value of a, when that's greater than 1, that horizontally compresses the graph. You can see that this graph is much skinnier than that graph, right? Well, then if its, if it's absolute value of a is greater than 1, it compresses it. So if the absolute value of a is less than 1, it's going to stretch it. So let's go and look at what we're going to do here. Now, for these two, they have equations. So my function reasoning is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to kind of explain this using equations. Um, however, the math and everything I do is exactly the same. All right. Uh, that was loud. First thing to do, axis symmetry. x equals opposite of b, negative 2, divided by 2 times a, 1 half. Well, 2 times 1 half is 1. So it's negative 2 divided by 1, which equals negative 2. Again, first step, guys. Graph. I guess, why am I all my axis symmetries are negative? That's kind of interesting. 1, 2. OK. So now, to go ahead and find the vertex, what I want you to think about is think about when I think of equations, I always think of a table of values. And again, as I mentioned, here we're talking about x and y's. Instead of having the f of x court axis, now we have the y axis. It's the same axis. It represents the same thing. It just kind of has different meanings. So if I'm saying that the, that the axis symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex, 
Therefore, I'm going to say negative 2 is the x coordinate. Well, how do I find the y coordinate? Well, you do the same thing. You plug in the, at, you plug in the value of x into your equation and then solve for y. So y equals 1 half times negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2 minus 3. So we're doing the same thing as I did in functions. It's just a different representation. It's just a different way to kind of um, explain it. So negative 2 squared is going to be positive 4. Positive 4 times 1 half is going to be 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and then minus 3. So basically, I have 2 minus 2 is negative 2. Minus 3 is negative 5. So therefore, at the point negative 2, my vertex is at negative 5. So negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, again, if you know this, since I know that a is positive, so I'm going to go up. So instead of going over 1, up 1, though, I need to multiply that by 1 half. So it's going to be over 1, up 1 half. Instead of going over 2, up 4, it's going to be over 2, up 4 times 1 half, which is 2. So it would be over 2, up 2. So you could easily just graph that from there. But I'm going to use the table values as well. So just like I talked with functions, I like to choose values that are right next to my axis symmetry and just either pick, pick sides, either to the right or to the left. Again, I'm going to choose the right because it's towards the y-axis. It just makes it easier. So I'm going to choose the values negative 1 and 0. And all I'm going to simply do is do the same math I was doing before. And then I'll do that for 0. And then I'm going to evaluate these. But to kind of keep time a little bit short, I showed you how to do one of them. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do the rest of them a little bit quicker. So if I had here for 0, that one's easy. That's negative 3. So therefore, I go and plot the point 0, negative 3, 0, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. This one's going to give me a fraction, but that's OK. I have negative 1 squared, which is 1. 1 times 1 half is 1 half. Um, that gives me 1 half. Uh, so 2, minus, 2 times negative 1 is going to be negative 2. Uh, negative 2 plus, uh, or sorry, negative 2. And then negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Well, negative 5 plus 1 half is like negative 4.5, right? Or negative 4 and a half. So negative 1, or negative 1. So it would be negative 4.5. So over 1, down 4 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then a half. OK, then I simply just rewrite those points to the other side. And then I just reflect. So I was, hopefully you guys can see that since that 1 half, that is vertically stretching that graph, or horizontally stretching that graph. My apologies. OK, last one. Just a little bit of fun that we're going to do in this one. Again, it's another fraction problem, so everybody hates fractions. Um, but I wanted to do this one because a lot of students make mistakes here on the axis of symmetry. So here, the axis is going to be um, x equals, did I not write that in there? Yeah, remember, all right, remember that's x equals negative 2. The axis of symmetry is a negative. So this one's going to be opposite of b divided by 2 times 3 fourths. Well, in reality, that's negative 6 divided by 6 over 4. Now, you can't divide out the 6's, but what you can do is multiply by the reciprocal. But before I multiply by the reciprocal, I know 6 over 4, I can reduce that to negative 6 um, over 3 halves. I basically multiplied, um, I basically divided the 6 and the 4 by 2 over 2. Then, to get a fraction off the denominator, I'll multiply by the reciprocal. And therefore, that multiplies the 1. And I'm left with negative 6 over 1 times 2 thirds, which is a negative 12 over 3, which equals negative 4. So my axis symmetry is equal to negative 4. I guess all my axis symmetries today are going to be negative. But that's OK. You could do positive. It's not, it's not going to change any answers that you have. Um, to, find my vertex, to find my vertex, I'm not going to show you the table, but you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take the value of the axis, axis symmetry and then plug it in for x. So I'll have y equals. 3 fourths times negative 4 squared plus 6 times negative 4 minus 8. So I have y equals it's negative 6, negative 4 squared, I'm sorry, is 16. So I know some fraction operations here are probably going to come, so let's, uh, let's help people out. Minus 24 minus 8. Now remember, when multiplying fractions, you rewrite a whole number times a fra as a fraction. You could either multiply across, or you could just simplify 16 over 4 is just going to give you 4. So 4 times 3 is going to be 12. So I have positive 12 minus 24 minus 8. So therefore, how did that work? What did I do from that one? 
thought that problem was different. Hmm. So I have 12 uh, minus tw negative 24 is negative 12 minus 8 is negative 20. So y equals negative 20. I thought I changed that problem. Let me go and see here. I don't want to create, oh, plus 1. I guess that changed it. Oh, OK. Hmm. Oh, that was a negative. All right, well, let's go by negative 20. That's fine. So negative 4, negative 20. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. OK, so now to go ahead and create two points, again, we can do the exact same thing that we did before. Uh, my recommendation would also be, though, to pick some points that, you're, when you square them, are going to be divisible by 2. Um, a couple points, either though I would recommend that you use points that are right next to the axis symmetry. A lot of times, it's, just, it's easier to choose points that are going to be divisible by your fraction. So in this case, I'm going to do 0 and um, 2. So when I plug 0 in for x, I get negative 8. So at 0, I'm at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then at positive 2, when I plug in positive 2, I get 2 squared, which is 4. 4 times 3 fourths is just going to leave you with a 3. Um, 2 times 3 is going to be, or 6 times 2 is going to be a positive 12, and then minus 8. So therefore, that gives you 15. That gives you a negative um, 3 times 2 minus 8. So then at positive 2, I am dealing with 15, positive 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That becomes a negative 20. So that's negative 4, negative 20. At 0 gives me negative 8. And then at 2, I have now, I am at, at 2, I am at 7. Then you can just count how far are these away from the axis symmetry. Well, that's 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'll draw this point over here. That's going to be 5, 6. And then I'll draw that point up there. So therefore, I just graph that. And there you go. OK, now real quickly, let's go ahead and identify the domain range max and min. Uh, again, the max is going to be the minimal number here. You can see that this vertex here is the smallest point. So therefore, that's going to be a minimum value. Over here, you can see my vertex is the top, is the highest point. So that's going to be a max. Over here, it's a min. And over here, it's going to be a min. That was supposed to be a negative. I see what I did. OK, either way, now the domain for all of these is going to be all real numbers, because the domain is the set of all x values that make up a graph. Well, these graphs are going to continue to expand for all real numbers. Um, so therefore, x represents the x, or domain represents all the x values that make up a graph. In this case, it's going to be all real numbers. The range, however, is the set of all y values that make up the graph. So you always want to start with the lowest y value and then go up to the highest y value. So in this case, my range, the lowest y coordinate that I have in this graph is 0, which is a part of the graph, so I'm going to use a bracket. And then the highest y value, you can see this graph is going to go up to infinity. Infinity is not a number, so we're going to use an open bracket. Over here, my lowest y value is going to go down to in negative infinity. So here, my range is going to be from negative infinity. But then the highest y value is going to be the, uh, is going to be the y value of my vertex, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's part of it, so it's a ver um, bracket. Over here, you can see the minimum value is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. So that's at negative 5. And that's going to go all the way up to infinity. Parenthesis, bracket. Over here, my minimum value is now going to be negative 20. And it's going to go up to infinity. So that's going to be negative 20, comma, infinity. OK, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a quadratic by using the formula for vertex and axis of symmetry. Thanks. <sighs>